Arcade Perfect, my arms. How we doing guys? Welcome to another uh, Arcade Perfect, my arms. Um, this week's game is Chase HQ by Tato, released in 1988. Um, this is a, again, it's a classic, uh, classic game from the, the period. Basically the idea being you have to try and uh, ram um, getaway cars off the road. And that is basically the idea of the game. This game was ported to quite a few uh, home systems, which we shall take a look at um, in a wee while. So anyway, let's uh, batter on and see what this game's all about. This is the arcade version, um, which you can probably tell. using the turbo thing pushes you along at a fair old rate this game like any other uh, arcade driving games really benefits having a, a steering wheel which sadly I don't have however I do have a trackball on the main cab and it actually works surprisingly well, so I'm using a trackball for this. It's not an easy game this. Especially when you can't stay in the road properly like me. And it doesn't help when you run into the back of other cars. This game was really, it came out in the mid 80s, well the early 80s, sorry late 80s I should say, right with the uh, you know, Miami Vice was on TV, it was all, uh, you know, slacks and rolled up uh, sleeves in your jacket. I mean, even the, the two sort of characters that appear in it look dead ringers for uh, the characters. Ah, bollocks. Let's stick an hard coin in. The sound in this game is amazing though. Especially the arcade one. suspicion of first degree murder. Okay, listen, that's uh, probably enough. That is the arcade version. Let's take a look at some other versions. Okay guys, this is the Commodore Amiga version. And this is uh, actually running on uh, proper hardware because uh, I tried it on emulation and the sound was all over the place. 
So let's see how we start. Are you going to get any speech? Oh, yeah, beauty. So far, so good. It looks very arcade like. The sound certainly sounds nice. Now, hmm, hmm, and it's when it starts moving, it all goes horribly wrong. It's got that really annoying flashing uh, sort of track movement that quite a few uh, racers on the Amiga seem to have. Um, the sort of early racers. You know, static graphics look nice. Sound certainly sounds like it's straight from the arcade. It's just quite a lazy way of uh, conveying movement, which I don't really like. Oops, so there's it. Now I'm guessing I can press is it space bar or something, do you think? There we go. And once again, it's using my pet heat, the press forward to accelerate. Don't know why I have to assist in doing that, but anyway. Ah, the track movement just looks a bit rubbish. It's certainly pop up central as well. I mean, Sprite looks really nice. I mean, the sound is excellent. It's arcade, I would say it's almost arcade perfect. Not the whining the uh, engine sound that has to be said. But the, uh, the wee skinny skidding kind of sound sounds, sounds nice. Ah, you silly twat. So this is the problem. You're trying to fold it forward and turn at the same time. I mean, this was a fairly early Amiga game, I think. It wasn't really until, I don't know whether this, when this came out, to be honest with you, but it was only really when uh, your Lotus, they were the, that was the first, your Lotus Challenge, that was the first game that really nailed the driving game in Amiga. And then after that, there was a few copycat uh, games came out, you had your Jaguar XG220, I think it was, and then you had uh, Crazy Cars 3 as well, which was excellent. I'm going to run out of time here. One more. Have I done it? <laughs> Woo, two seconds to go. Under a red. Ah, it's not bad. Again, it's like a lot of the conversions on these 16-bit uh, machines. It's it's competent enough, but you just you always feel it could have been done better. But uh, yeah, it is what it is, guys. That's the Commodore Amiga version. Okay, this is the C64 version. Now, I've actually got it set to infinite lives, or not infinite lives, infinite time and that kind of stuff to hopefully give us a... let me be able to look at it a bit better without having to restart the game. Now, right away, it's got my most hated form of control in driving games and that's you press up. It just makes it difficult because you're trying to hold it forwards whilst cornering why they can't just have left and right for steering and fire button to, you know, to accelerate. I don't know why they can't do that. But it seems to be the favoured uh, choice of uh, 8 bit and 16 bit driving games. Well, this feels like it's running at probably a quarter of the speed that it should be. I mean, this game is all about speed. And right now, I'm supposedly doing 264 miles an hour. And it looks like I'm out for a Sunday drive in a C5. 
Everything is moving so sluggish. Sound is dreadful. Now let's hit the turbo and see if we get anything else. That's us running in the turbo. And you can see there, it speeds up marginally. Now I was fortunate enough to not actually have this on my C64, I'd actually moved on to 16-bit at that point. And suffice to say, I'm delighted I didn't have to feel ripped off with a game like this. It looks alright, I mean it kind of looks more like a Spectrum with the monochrome graphics. But everything is just so slow. Let's kick the turbo in once again. There we go. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I, I mean, I've never played this before, but I was led to believe it was quite a poor conversion, and I must admit, it's, uh, I've not been let down, it's, it is indeed pretty awful. That sound, I mean, you know, this game, I don't know when this game came out, but the C64 has got a fantastic sound chip. So why, back in whenever it came out, 87, 88, have you got to endure this? And wine, wine. Let's kick the turbo in again. It always shows that the cars are actually too big for the road as well. The sprite for the main car looks alright. I'll give you that. But everything else, it's just, it's just so slow. If it played smooth or it played quicker, it might be half a decent game, but. There we go, we've got a sight of a target car. That'll be the, the grade uh, sprite I'm guessing, is it? Alright, okay, I had it set to uh, one bump and uh, it uh, completes it, so it's not normally that easy. Anyway, listen, I think we've seen enough of this one, guys. That is the C64 version. Right then, this is the Sega Master System. Now, uh, <clears throat> I've already played the, uh, the Game Gear version and as I expected, this looks identical. Yep, that looks... Yep. If I didn't know differently, I was thinking I was actually playing the same game. Yeah, I think this is absolutely the same. Don't think there's any difference at all. Other than that, say uh, we're getting huge graphic glitches going on here. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Anyway, I'm not going to play for this one for any more than about a minute because it looks to me. A, it's uh, not working properly under emulation, and B, it looks identical to the Game Gear one. Although this one seems to be glitching a lot more, the, the uh, Game Gear one seems to be absolutely fine. Now the emulator I use for the Sega Master System is an absolute cracking emulator. It's normally spot on, so surely this the retail version of this didn't glitch the way this is glitching. I would if I was uh, if I'd paid good money for this, I would be extremely pissed off. Yeah, anyway listen, that's enough. This is the Sega Master System guys. Let's uh, move on with something else. Okay, this is the uh, Game Boy Color version. It's called Chase Secret or Chase HQ Secret Police. So I don't know how this is going to differ from other other versions. Let's see if I can get this uh, started. Okay, right. Let's get going. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, it gives you the speed and that kind of stuff. Hit points three. A convenience store robbery. Could an awful use a smaller font so we could fit it all on the screen? Right, okay, so it's slightly different by the looks of things. No, I don't need any help. Come on, I just want to start. Press A to place your team members. What on earth? I've absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. How do I actually play this? Battle start. I have no idea what that was, what was going on there. Alright, okay, I appeared to be able to fire as well. It's got a bit, it a bit more like Road Blasters than uh, Chase HQ. So it looks like this isn't the Chase HQ we actually know. This has probably got more in common with the Chase HQ sequel, which allowed you to actually uh, to shoot to fire the gun. And I think I've run out of my bullets. It looks like things now. I know you get any bits jumping off. This uh, is pretty much what I would expect for the Game Boy Color. It's a limited system. Um, it's not bad. I mean, it actually feels feels quite nice. Um, it doesn't, I mean, although it's got the, uh, the sort of scrolling uh, colours, it's at the side which makes it, it's not quite so kind of in your eyes, if that makes any sense, it's not quite so hypnotic. Um, I mean, actual roadside obstacles move fairly fluently as well, so yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad for the Game Boy Colour. You know, we have to try and remember guys that this is uh, ancient technology. Appear to have. Whoops! I'll just pause the game. Right, okay, so that's pressing start button seems to. Oh, is that it? Is he on fire? <laughs> Here we go. Congratulations, password. Right, anyway, that's not too bad. It's it's what you'd expect from a, a Game Boy Color version. It's all good. Anyway, guys, yep, this is the Nintendo Game Boy Color. Let's crack on. Okay, then, this is the PC Engine um, version, or Turbo Graphics 16, as it was known outside the UK. Eh, outside um, Europe, I think it was, actually. Not quite sure what the O says stands for there. Looks like it's crashed. And yeah, let's try and crack on. Never played this version. This is Nancy at Safe Headquarters. We've got an emergency here. Got some decent speech. Got you, Nancy. Okay, let's go. Whoops, what was that? Not certainly responsive enough. Graphics look nice, nice and sharp, nice colour. Um, it's not ultra smooth, um, but you know what? Well, it's, it's not half bad. I do apologise if you can hear my dog kicking off in the background. He always seems to do it when I'm recording a video. Let's go again.
Yeah, it's it's not bad. It's, it's, it's the graphics look nice. It's no very very smooth. Uh, I'm maybe a bit hypercritical, but it's not particularly smooth. That's the only downside to it. Doing absolute pants in this. Just bear with me guys, back in two soon. Apologies about that guys. Right, how are we? What's happening here? Right, where were we? But yeah, Steven Spielberg doesn't get problems with people phoning when he's trying to record uh, his late latest blockbuster. Not like us YouTubers, eh? Right, this uh, one little more little go. I'm not 100 percent convinced in this version. It does look really nice. And you know, considering what most of the, the home versions were at the time, this is probably about as close as you were gonna get. The problem is I've got the buttons configured all over the place, that's why I keep pausing the game accidentally. Oh come on, I'm not even getting to see the uh, the car. I want to ram, let's just keep going. It looks like I'm not going to see it either, that was a waste. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it looks really nice, colours are great, graphics look fantastic. It looks, it plays quite nice when it's going a bit slower, but it's just a wee bit too not smooth enough for my liking, but you know, it's still a, still a decent version. So anyway guys, that was the PC Engine version of TurboGrafx-16. Okay, this is the NES version. So, let's go. Where do we start? <laughs> yeah, the Japanese sounds much better than the British one, or the, the English one I should say. Right, it looks a wee bit similar to the mission, or whatever. Right, come on, start. There. How do we change gear? Right, and that's how we change gear. Well, it's certainly fast. It actually moves along quite nicely. And I like the way the wee car jumps up and down as if the road's a wee bit bumpy. And back. Whoops! <laughs> what the hell? I should actually post uh, an, epilepsy, an epilepsy warning in this uh, video with these flashing uh, kind of junctions in the, in the road. What's that? Oh, that dearie needs time up almost. How do we use the turbo thing? Have we got a turbo? Yeah, according to that, we've got a turbo. That's how you use turbo. Probably a bit too little too late. I appeared to have 53 seconds again on the clock. Aye, anyway, let's just get back to the game. Never mind me enjoying playing the game. Um, it's it's called Chase HQ. It doesn't really feel like Chase HQ. Um, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's certainly better than the, than the Master System one. Off again. Um, movement isn't too bad. It's it's as you'd expect. It's an 8-bit console. You know, you're not going to get uh, 60 frames a second, anything like that. So roadside obstacles are a bit 
basic to say the least. Come on, no, don't fuck up now. Come on, two to go, I think. Looks like the wheels have fallen off his car. Come on, is that one to go? Come on, 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 come on. <laughs> please, please. No. I don't believe it. I'm an arse. Bollocks. Anyway, yep, this is, uh, I think that's probably enough. Um, it's alright, it's not bad. It's, it's what you'd probably expect for an NES version of a quite a kind of complex arcade game. So, anyway, let's uh, move on. Right, here we go. This is Chase HQ on the Amstrad CPC 464 to give it its full name. Now, uh, let me see. It doesn't appear you can play with the joystick, which I don't believe because I couldn't get it to work the joystick. Um, nah, okay, we're going to have to go with keys, I think, guys. So let's see. Press key for gear. Right, go for that. Accelerate can be that. Brake can be that. Left can be that. Right can be that. Pause can be P. Turbo can be spacebar. Okay, let us, let us try. Let's go. Well, that sounded like a very arcade authentic sound effect. If I'm not mistaken. Can we quit that? It doesn't appear you can. Yes, that's... Hey, he's even got speech. Let me move. Ah, right, okay, low gear, right, here we go. High gear! Hey, yeah, that looks really nice. Yep, that looks excellent. Nice use of colour. It's nice and quick. Let's try a turbo. Now again, I've actually got this, I'm cheating again, I've got infinite turbos, infinite time, etc, etc, etc. Stuck another uh, turbo on. Except it always helps if you can actually stay off the, the grass. Let's try high gear. Now I'm absolutely pants at this, as you can probably tell, but you know what? This is a pretty damned impressive conversion. You know, again, con considering this is an 8-bit machine. I even like the way they've actually got the, uh, I mean, apart from the roads itself, the undulations, you can even see the car itself kind of moving, the perspective of the car changes. Oops, you don't want to do that. Your time's up. Yeah, it's even got a wee bit of speech as well, which is fantastic. Right, let's... How can we continue? Let's drop down a gear. Quite hard to actually stay on the road when you're using that turbo thing. And you know what? I've got infinite turbos. In fact, I don't have infinite turbos. I thought I did. Okay, there he is. Come here, you. It's a bloody hard game, this old Chase HQ. I don't have infinite turbos, unfortunately. But this is really nice. It's really colourful. I'm struggling 
big time actually. Get the guy. I've never I've never been a, a key person. Being a 64 man, keys wasn't something that you really had to get used to, it was always joysticks. But no, this is excellent. Like I'm gonna run out of time. Sixteen seconds. Goodness, I just noticed the timer way over five minutes, but you know what? I wanted to see if I can get to the end of this bit, which I'm obviously not going to. Eight seconds left. Four, three, two, one. That's it. Game over. Anyway, listen, guys, that's an excellent version. Brilliant. Yep, time's up, as Nancy confirms. This is the Amstrad CPC 464. Okay, this is the Atari ST version. Colour the white ever was it not looks grey me. Anyway. Hey, it's push forward to accelerate. Just what I love. Now then, um it plays not too bad. Again, the graphics are quite uh, quite detailed. Scrolling is not too bad, but once again, it uses that annoying uh, sort of flashing light, not flashing lights. What do you call it? Scrolling sort of shaded uh, lines in the road to kind of give you an impression of speed. Why am I going so slow? Ah, uh, I appear to have dropped down a gear. Let's get our speed up. We're using a turbo boost apparently. Now I'm guessing you can probably turn the music off in this because uh, this game really needs sound rather than music. Now I must admit I've already played the Amiga one and I wasn't too... Uh, I was a bit critical of the Amiga one. Now, is this the same game? I don't know. It actually feels a wee bit nicer to play. What I don't like about the, the sort of the, the lines on the top of the, uh, on the road is you've seen the distance. It kind of looks a bit weird the way the, the road kind of comes towards you. But I mean, the actual sprites himself move not too bad. Definitely want to turn the. Your time's up. Right, okay, we know that, Nancy. Thanks very much for reminding me. Let's see if we can crack on here. There we go. Drop down a gear. Yeah, see the way it kind of flashes the different colours in the background. I don't like that. I think that's what kind of puts me off. That sort of. A that sort of a effect that they use. Oops. Let's drop down a gear. And let it hit the turbo. There we go. Turbo. Turbo. Ah, bollocks. I keep using the turbo after I've stopped. Twat. Right, turbo. Here he is. Yeah, I 
graphics look alright, it's just the spice himself are fine. I mean, I mean, I'll, I love this game, but it's damn hard. Oh, bollocks, come on, once more. Take that. Thank you. You're under arrest. Yeah, it's not bad. As I say, it may be ident identical to the Amiga one. I can't remember, actually. Um, I actually enjoyed that one a bit more. Don't don't ask me why, but anyway. Yep, that's the Atari ST. Okay, this is the Sega Game Gear version. Let's see how you start it. Alright, okay, so you can change things. Let's just go with the default options, I think. No speech. I didn't really expect speech, I don't think. Oops, I peered off. Uh, right, okay, here we go. <laughs> right, okay. Um, nice backgrounds. Ooh. <laughs> It's uh, it's certainly fast enough. Um, it's all about it's all about um, I don't know. I mean, the cars move kind of fairly authentically. If anything, it looks just a bit too quick. I think the thing that's missing in this version, almost. Is the lack of uh, well, there's, there's a lamp. So I was going to say the lack of any uh, roadside obstacles to give you any real impression of speed. I mean, they're using the, the old uh, the biggest trick in the book for racing games, and that is uh, having flashing lines. And the turbo doesn't seem to do an awful an awful lot. Oh, come on, bollocks! I notice this one's got a little uh, radar at the bottom. Whoops. Yeah, the graphics are fairly basic. But I'm guessing this probably looked alright on a, a small Game Gear uh, screen. I mean, I'm playing this on a, on a, a PC monitor, so... Uh... But yeah, that's what they tended to do. You know, they used the old uh, flashing... Uh, Use the flashing lines to simulate movement. Thank goodness that was easy. That's a lot easier than other versions that I've played. Okay, now they've, uh, they've kind of tweaked the graphics slightly. They're not exactly uh, authentic to the arcade one. Okay. Stage two. Anyway, listen, that's uh, that's uh, probably enough of this version, guys. This is the Sega Game Gear. Let's uh, batter on. Okay, this is uh, what's it called? Super Chase HQ, and this is on the SNES. Now, again, I think they've kind of done their own thing. Um, as we'll soon see. I'm sure I've played this before and I think they actually go for a different kind of viewpoint from the uh, original. So yeah, they've, they've kind of moved away from the, the sort of the, the original formula. You know, it's a bit more elaborate. I don't want you to watch that bollocks. Roger.
Right, okay, so they've gone for an in-car view, which is an interesting take, innit? There's no gear about that, yeah, I could be in fifth gear, whoops. So yeah, this isn't true to the, the arcade one, and again, this isn't really going to figure in the, the overall ratings because uh, it's a different game entirely. It's uh, probably the, the general idea of the game and the actual names that the only thing's got in common with uh, the, the arcade one. And it's faster than hard as well, don't mind admitting that. I don't know why they didn't just go for the, the out car view, but I suppose back, back in the back in the day, guys, uh, this was probably looked upon as an enhancement. You know, it's 3D rather than the uh, sort of you know the, the viewpoint that the arcade one takes. It's only sort of now, 20 odd years later, that we'd rather have had the original kind of uh, look. And it looks like. <laughs> anyway, that said, just as hurts. SNES 9XW stopped working. Anyway, listen, that's enough. I think uh, that's good enough to draw uh, the SNES version to close, because it was shite anyway. Okay then, this is uh, <clears throat> this is actually Chase HQ2 on the Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't believe the first one, the original uh, Chase HQ, was ever released. So I'm not really going to, this isn't going to figure in the overall uh, rating of what is the best Chase HQ because that would be unfair because this is actually the sequel um, or it's its own sort of version of it. So let's say uh, batter on anyway, I thought it would be nice just to include it since I'm not going to do a Chase HQ 2 um, arcade perfect my R, so I thought I might as well just include it anyway just to let you, let you see in case it's a game uh, that you want to go and play. What's uh, what, what I was quite... Uh, Chuffed to hear is uh, Monkey Spies 5000 has actually done a, a separate review of Gauntlet 4 in the Mega Drive, and it's because he saw uh, he saw that version in my uh, Gauntlet Arcade uh, Perfect feature. So it's good that uh, I mean I think what I like about these kind of videos is it lets people see all the different games that are available. And you know, in the case of Monkey Spies, uh, he's now found a game that he quite enjoys. So yeah, happy days. Anyway, look, that's Nancy. I'm guessing. No, you can, you've got a choice here, sports car, four wheel drive, same. let's go for a truck. Go to be a big, big truck, a la Terminator 2. Ok, it certainly looks nice and bright. It's not the smoothest looking game in the world. But, you know, the 16 bit consoles was never really that great at doing driving games. Now, don't get me wrong, there were some excellent driving games on them, but... <laughs> I do believe I always went over a ramp. Yeah, I mean, Road Rash is an excellent game, but anyway, I'm just going to see you talking about Road Rash and talking about Cheese HQ. I mean, it looks alright. Apart from the ramp and the road, I can't really see too different from the uh, GCHQ. Certainly a nice background as well, it appears to have got dark since I went through uh, the tunnel. Oh, bloody hell, is that thunder and lightning? Now I'm sure in the sequel to GCHQ you can... <laughs> I just fell off the bloody bridge. Um, yeah, I'm sure you could actually, there was a... Talking about. I'm sure that you could actually fire a gun, well, I don't, and that's in the arcade sequel, I don't know whether this game is actually based in the arcade sequel or not. Well, I don't think Chase H2 in the arcade gave the choice of cars. So it looks like uh, Sega have kind of done their own thing with this particular version. Which is quite strange considering the, uh, the Master System and Game Gear both got their own version of the original. Come on, 
fine. What's this damage of it? I love it. Three. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not, it's not great. It's, you know, I, I don't really think the 16 bit consoles were cut out for sort of racing games. Like I said, there are some. Uh, some good racing games on them, but in the main, I found it just it just didn't really have the, the sort of the the oomph under the the bonnet, as they say. So anyway, guys, that is the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, that's uh, TCHQ2, which isn't going to figure in the overall results. So let's crack on. Okay, this is the, the Game Boy version, as you can probably tell, with the, the various shades of grey. Now, how do we turn the music off? Yep, that's we don't want the bloody annoying music because it's an arcade game and you need sound effects. Right, okay. Ah, David Whitaker done the music. Sorry, David. Right, anyway, let's batter on. Maybe accelerate brake. Okay, select turbo, blah, blah, blah. Up, down, shift. Right, okay, I think we've got that. I'm guessing the fact it's in Japanese, this game wasn't released in the UK or in Europe. I'm not too sure. Nice uh, meaty engine sound. It feels like you're sliding about an ice here. It's actually um, the graphics, not the graphics, the, the car sort of graphics seems to turn a lot more when you actually. Come on, how do we change up gear? It's B. No, no, it's not. It's up. Full. Um. Right. Okay. It's. It looks a bit like a ZX81 version of GCHQ with the, uh, the sort of shading. There's absolutely no feeling the movement. Um, I mean, the only feeling the movement you've got really is the sort of little scrolling lines at the side of the road where you have got a few uh, cactus, I suppose. Um, oops. I think I'm trying to crash. Let's see if we can. Whoops. Oh, there's the accelerator, not the accelerator, the turbo boost. Now, oh, well, at least it's got a better uh, sort of junction uh, choice thing than some of the other versions. It doesn't give you uh, epilepsy, you know, the, the flashing. There seems to be a bit of a lack of cars, I must admit. I haven't a clue. Right, okay, there's the. You can see the little uh, distance of the gear at the top, so I think I'm going to have to use another one of my. Uh... Right, let's drop down a gear. Bang it back up, and let's use the turbo. Yeah! <laughs> graphics, static graphics. Sprite wise, look alright. It's, uh, it's pretty limited. Doesn't really feel like GCHQ. I mean, I've been playing it for about three minutes, and I've yet to actually find the uh, the enemy car. I mean, movement's not too bad. Secretly hoping that this Game Boy version was going to blow everyone else out of the water like it has done with a few other games, but uh, sadly not. You know what, it helps when I go in high gear, that's probably my biggest problem. Let's go for a turbo boost again. I'm going to run out of time. Yeah, going at high speed, there's not really, it's, I don't know what, how many frames a second it's running, but the, the kind of, the roadside obstacles, to say the least, are a bit, a bit jerky. Yeah, it's, it's, it's alright, 
it's a Game Boy, it's probably the version you'd expect to see in this, so uh, anyway, yeah, it doesn't exactly uh, blow me away, but anyway, let's move on, guys. Okay, this is on the PlayStation 2. Now, it appeared uh, only in Japan, unfortunately, as part of the Tato Memories collection. Um, yeah, why? Why? It's like a lot of these compilation things, they just never saw the light of day out with Japan, which is a shame. Because you can, well, you can see there, it looks pretty damn good. So, anyway, let's see how we can start this bad boy. Now, it's all in Japanese, so. Uh, Ok, that's credits. Now to start, you press start. <laughs> I always love the Japanese sound, it always sounds a lot more authentic than the uh... Now... Oops. How do we change? There we go. And this actually controls really nicely. Now, I'm guessing this is emulated, but what's interesting for me is the PlayStation isn't exactly a powerhouse when it comes to emulation, but I'm guessing, and you know, Chase HQ is a fairly graphically intensive or processor hungry uh, game, but I'm guessing it's probably been tweaked. Um, specifically to work pretty well on the PlayStation 2, so yeah, I am guessing this is a, a an emulated version. It certainly looks apart. How do we? Yep, let's crack on. But yeah, as expected, this is excellent. I would like to see this run side by side to see whether it is a, an actual conversion or whether it's... But this is the only... Uh, Sort of current, well, when you say it's current gen, this is only a uh, sort of like more up to date uh, generation or platform that's actually available on. I don't think it ever came out on the Dreamcast. I believe it came out on the Sega Saturn. Uh, I'm not too sure what compilation it was. Unfortunately, I don't have it on the Sega Saturn, so it's not a game. It's not a game I can show you. Oops, do apologize about that guys, uh, for some strange reason, if somebody turns a light switch on in the house, my upstairs TV seems to kind of black out, don't know what's going on there. Ah, come on, I'm making a mess of this. <laughs> right, let's just have one last, one last go. Right, come on Alan, let's go. This time. I'll do it. I was just thinking that myself. Anyway guys, listen, this is the PS2 version and it says it's available on Tito Memories number 2. Let's uh, crack on. Okay, I've probably saved the best for last. That's what I usually try to do when I do these things. Um, this one is probably no surprise to anybody who likes their uh, retro systems. This is the ZX Spectrum, now I believe this is the 128 version, which you can probably tell by the, the sort of uh, funky music. 
Now this, uh, this game is always, has always been considered by many, many people to be probably the finest arcade conversion, um, bar none, on all 8-bit machines. Um, now I've never really played it at great length, I've played it briefly. Um, I think I've only played the, the original uh, 48k version, which is it's, isn't that much dissimilar to this, apart from the music. So, anyway guys, let's say back on. How do we start this? Enter for options. Let's go for Kemp's and Joystick. Ha! <laughs> Straight out of the arcade. Yeah, it looks, it looks, eh, uh, <laughs> they seem to have crammed a lot in here. Hold on, man. Wow, speech as well. That's <laughs> so bad. Yeah, you know what? I've only played this for, what, about 10 seconds, but you can see already what, a, what an amazing job they've done here. It's quick, it's smooth, it's not got that horrible, eh, uh, Sort of, well, it has, it's got the sort of, uh, the, what's the word for this, a domino effect in the right, uh, the right hand side, but it's got actual lines, proper lines in the road to give you a proper feeling of speed. The car itself looks great, yeah, it's, it's as you'd expect, it's a uh, monochrome graphics, but this is flying along at a fair old rate, and I've not even uh, used the, uh, the turbo yet. I can completely see why. Let's try the turbo. How do we use the turbo? Here we go. It's even got good speech. Eh, not speech, it's even got a great sound as well. <laughs> yeah, I totally get this. I totally get why people hold this in such high regard. And it actually plays really well. One thing that's become apparent when I've been doing these arcade arcade conversions, um, I says I'm a 64 man. I was uh, I never liked the Spectrum. I always used to diss it. At any brilliant speech as well. At any opportunity, but I've got to say, in the time that I've been playing, uh, doing these uh, arcade perfect uh, features, oh bollocks! And it's just crashed. Hang on, back to. Okay, I appeared to crash. I'm running this under emulation. Um, so that's not the fault of the spectrum. And um, what was I talking about? Yeah, it's it's been evident that the majority of arcade conversions have actually been better on the, the spectrum than they have on the C64. Now, I would have never uh, bought that back in the day, but there you go. Them's the facts. Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, the road looks good, it's got the proper lines, the cars look decent, yeah, so they're monochrome, but that's, you expect, expect that on the spectrum. Um, side, um, roadside obstacles seem to move nicely, I like the way the wee car turns, the smoke at the back, um, the way the graphics kind of alter in the car itself. It, and it actually feels like Chase HQ, it feels like the arcade game that you're playing. Although I'm appear to be totally pish. I'm sure at the very least I can catch up with the bad guy. Yeah, it's quite an incredible uh, feat of programming. I've managed to not only shoehorn an arcade game into a 48k spectrum, or in this case a 128 spectrum, um, but they've made it as, as good as it is. Well, it's faster than hard because I haven't even caught up with the body yet. Anyway, listen, I'm not going to keep playing this. Uh, that's, that's really impressive. I like that a lot. So anyway guys, that is it. I think we've looked at quite a few versions of Chase HQ. So, um, let's see, to summarise, what have we got? 
C64 one. Less said about that one, the better. It was uh, dull. It was slow. Lack of colour. It didn't even look like a C64 game, but yeah, quite a poor, uh, a very, very poor conversion. Um, hang on, I'm just going to pause this for a second. Yeah, quite a, quite a poor uh, conversion. Oh, you can bugger off. A little message has popped up, sorry about that. Yep, Amstrad uh, CPC 464, fantastic version. Really colourful. Super fast, smooth movement, um, cracking, you know, brilliant PC programming. PC Engine, yeah, I, when I was uh, watching back the video after, uh, to basically do a summary, um, I was a wee bit critical of the movement um, when I was actually playing the game, but I haven't had a chance to look at it again, probably because of the fact that I've, I've now played about, I don't know, a dozen versions of Chase HQ, I can actually see that the PC Engine was a pretty good uh, conversion. Super fast, really nice graphics, pretty smooth as well. So yeah, all in all, a good uh, conversion. Game Gear and Master System. Game Gear, uh, they both kind of. There's no real feeling of movement. Quite sparse graphics. Um, the Master System, for whatever reason, was glitching something terrible again. Don't know whether that's because it's under emulation. No idea. Um, I'm guessing it's probably does that in the original as well. Um, but Pretty basic versions. They didn't really feel like uh, Chase HQ. There were actually slight variants anyway, sort of thing. So, um, Game Boy Color again. It was a kind of slightly variation on the original. Um, okay, graphics and movement. It wasn't spectacular, but you know what? It's a Game Boy Color. You don't really expect um, expect too much. NES. That was actually really nice. Um, it's got the actual movement in the road was really really nice. The car bumped up and down. Um, you know, felt quite smooth, it felt quite authentic, so yeah, quite a decent version on the NES. Game Boy, I was quite disappointed in the Game Boy, I've maybe been building my hopes up with Game Boy's, uh, Game Boy versions, given how well it's fared in the last uh, few Arcade Perfect features, but yeah, it was quite slow, no real kind of action, in fact, I think the whole time I played it, I never even caught up with the, uh, the first uh, sort of baddie. Um, and there was no real impression of speed or anything, so yeah, not a, not a great version in the Game Boy. Mega Drive, it's probably what I expected. Um, you know, I always felt that like the 16-bit consoles weren't quite powerful enough to really give a good uh, driving game, so although it looked really nice, it wasn't particularly smooth, it felt a bit kind of jerky, but all in all, no bad conversion. It's probably, you couldn't expect uh, very much more, I wouldn't think. Um, the SNES, <laughs> I've written one word here, I've written shite. Um, they've tried to, they obviously tried to think they'd be clever, big and clever, and make it 3D, you know, in car view sort of thing. But it, to me, it didn't really work. <coughs> the only thing I had in common with the arcade game was the name um, and the fact that it crashed under emulation. That's got nothing to do with anything. I'm sure it wouldn't crash in the, on an original SNES, but yeah, that was a pile of wank. Um, Atari ST and Amiga. Again, I was a wee bit critical of the Amiga one when I was playing it, but having had a chance to look at it again, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Again, there were fairly early driving games in the Amiga and uh, in, in the sixteen-bit computers until I says the uh, your sort of your what do you call it Lotus Turbo Challenge and your Jaguar XJ two twenty and etc. Racing games on the sixteen-bit computers weren't that great, so that was pretty much along the same lines of other games like your outrunning and that kind of stuff, but not bad, not bad, you know, back in the day I would probably been quite happy to, to get that uh, in my Christmas stocking if I was wanting a, a Chase HQ game. Um, the one thing I didn't like about these versions was the annoying flashing road, you know, you would screw the, the, sort of like the, the two different uh, lines, what am I trying to see here, like the checkered board pattern type thing coming towards you, it, it looks real irritating. Um, they obviously use that to give an impression of speed, and plus, when you look in the background, the sort of of the actual road, it just looks like it's flashing away. So, no, I don't like that kind of that use, but I understand why they used it. Um, anything else? Let me think. The Sega Saturn, absolutely fantastic. Um, you know that not the Sega Saturn. I'm talking shit. Sorry, the PS2, absolute arcade perfect. I'm guessing that was running under emulation. If it wasn't, they've done a cracking um, conversion. 
So yeah, absolutely brilliant. But again, I'm not going to include that in the final uh, summary because that that was you know it's uh, yeah it's going to be the best place to play Chase HQ out with uh, Mame or the arcade, but uh, you know it's probably running under emulation. And anyway, guys, so I think I think I have um, mentioned every single version. Um, yep. Yeah, so to summarise, um, not to summarise. So to give my top three. Now it's quite tough this one. Um, in bronze position, third place, I'm going to go with the PC Engine version. Like I said, it was looked at it, looking at it again, it was quite an authentic version of uh, Chase HQ. Certainly, probably the, the most arcade sort of perfect one you were going to get until the PS2 version came along, um, probably ten years later, sort of thing. So, yep, third place to PC Engine. Now, second place, second and first place. This. There's going to be some people arguing whether this is the right way, but I'm going to go with what I think. Um, Silver, second place, I'm going to go with Amstrad. Um, absolutely cracking, cracking, cracking conversion. Really, really, really good. Um, looked nice. Um, got all the colour, it's got the speed, it's got the movement. You know, you couldn't ask for any more. Absolutely blows the C64 out of the water, and I hate myself for saying that, but it does. Uh, now, as no surprise, um, in first place in gold medal position, I've got to go for the Spectrum version. It's uh, an ap absolute epic feat of programming. You know, it's hard to fault it. It's got speech, it's got music, it's got the. I don't know, it's just it's got everything. It looks apart. Um, other than being kind of monochrome, I would say it's just about the best version you could possibly get. So, yep, that is it, guys. That is the end of another Arcade Perfect My Arse. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please uh, like it. Any comments? And if you want to see any other games featured in these uh, features, please uh, post below. Let me let me know. Um, if you like the videos that I make, I would be really uh, grateful if you'd like to subscribe. That would be fantastic. Um, I am on Twitter as well under Meister, And you can also catch me on the Retro and Lum website. I'm now part of that community. So anyway, guys, a big thumbs up from me uh, to you for watching it. If you managed to stick this out to the very end, thank you for watching. And as usual, guys, I'll catch you later. Bye for now.